<laughs> Thank you to the fourth king of Bhutan for expelling my parents from their country, which allow me to speak in front of you today in this big stage in the most democratic country of the world. My name is Thikaram Dungana. I am a former refugee from Bhutan. I was living a happily life with my parents in Bhutan for hundreds of years. Unfortunately, the fourth king of Bhutan, he chased my parents out of the country because my parents belongs to different cultural group, different religion, looks different from the government. The people, the government adopted a policy called one nation, one people, which technically means he loves to one group of people and hates the other group of people. Bhutan is a small country squeezed between Tibet and India. This is most micro view of Bhutan, where it is located, if you have not heard about the small country, which is most sm uh, smaller than even Pennsylvania, with a population of around 600,000 to 700,000. And more than 100,000 of its citizens were chased out of country because they follow different religion, different culture, and believe in different way of life. Today, I will be speaking about humanity and the value of refugee. Refugee are not the garbage. They are the asset when properly handled. This was the farmland of my parents who worked hard for more than 50 years. And they were gaining the prosperity and development after they were bought from Nepal as a slaves, like African people were sometimes bought by United States in the form of slaves. The government didn't want to see my parents' prosperity and development and progress. That is why they wanted to chase our people out of the country. This was the castle farm of my parents who were happily rearing in Bhutan. And this was the heavenly Bhutan where my parents and myself and whole other Nepali speaking people were living in Bhutan with pride. All of a sudden, like I mentioned, government adopted one nation, one people policy to evict the people who hate because of different culture and different looks and who have to spend a refugee life in Nepal for more than 18 years. Suddenly, my parents had more than 20 acres of land. They were technically million dollar worth landlord in Bhutan, has to become refugee and spend a most sorrowful, undesirable, and miserable life in the refugee camp. You can imagine the houses that made from susceptible to fire, susceptible to natural disasters, and susceptible to anything that can happen to these thatch roof and bamboo sticks walls, houses. They are susceptible to fire. When one hut get fired, whole the camp used to get fired. And this is not just one episode in every season. In every season, we have to bear these problems in the refugee camp. These are the temporary shelter when our Thatch roof got fired. We have to stay under the tree in a tent or plastic roof where there is no access of anything, anything. And we have to stay in this type of roof for about two months until our thatch roof get fixed. Same time, flood, all natural disaster. Just imagine a landlord has to spend this life for no reason no violence, nothing done against the government, just we believe in different way of life. These were the kids in the refugee camp, in dilemma between their future, progressive future, 
or hopeless future. But the quality education was there in the refugee camp, sponsored by UNHCR and people, international community like you, like American citizens and like all other citizens of the world who love the humanity. These were the kids in the fence looking for their future, a hopeful future sometime, because we had hope that humanity still exists in the world and there may be international community who may love to the needy people. It's not just like King of Bhutan. These were the humanitarian assistance because in the camp there used to be no transportation, there used to be no ambulance service. So whatever service we get help each other through humanitarian assistance. How many times we born in Bhutan, people die one time in their life, but we were born many times out of last breath because sometimes we born out of fire, sometimes we born out of flood, sometimes we born out of frustration, sometimes we born out of epidemic like diarrhea and dysentery, typhoid, because medical treatment in the refugee camp was unimaginable. Many people died without being diagnosed with different type of diseases. I had seen many of our people in the camps who lost their all kids, more than five, in one family. And they become kidless in the refugee camp because of undiagnosed problem or because of diarrhea and dysentery in the refugee camp. But the same time, the government, the king of Bhutan, was advocating with the international community about gross national happiness. I have heard the Prime Minister of Bhutan in one of the TED Talk, he was talking about gross national happiness and people were cheering up and clapping in his speech because most international people were unaware about what the government has done to us. And I would request to the international audiences to revert those claps that were given in one of the TED Talk. The laugh in Bhutan was just kind of gunpoint laugh. My parents were asked to laugh when they leave the country in gunpoint because my parents were forced to say that they left the country willingly and happily and all the property were taken back by the government of Bhutan. And that was used for the advocacy of gross national happiness probably by the government of Bhutan. You can see a real life and a fake life. Still the people of Bhutan are not happy from the heart. They are still unsatisfied with the way of government because we still have many relatives back in Bhutan and they are not yet citizen, although they were there since many hundreds of years because their relatives are, were refugee and they are now resettled to different countries of the world. For just that reason, the people of Bhutan are not yet citizen. The second picture you see may be the happiest moment of my life when I had an opportunity to get the citizen of this country. I am now proud citizen of this country for which I might be the happiest person of the world, which I got, <laughs> which, which I got after many, many years of life. So think, are refugees real garbage? Just think, what do you see in the picture? You see just yellow mud. It's a mountain. It looks just yellow because it is in raw form. It is not used. But 
if you can extract, it looks yellow, means golden. If we can extract the gold from the raw form and mold them to variable forms, we can turn the raw material into useful jewelry and ornaments, most valuable piece in the world. People use for different purposes. Maybe you can see the golden ring and golden chain of billion dollar worth. So refugees are just like this. If we leave them as they are, if we just forget them, if we forget the humanity, if we don't care about them, they can be just like raw material or they can be garbage. But if we can convert them into, if we can convert them and give the opportunity to their potential, then they can be converted into many useful form and they can be a big asset of the country of the resettlement. Just think the way humanity, humanity is not just human body, is the need of today's world where we, we have to help other needy population. So this is my proud moment when I become the citizen of this country. I toss the flag because I have never got an opportunity to see the flag in Bhutan. We always have to bow down in front of the king and in front of the flag. This is my family, happiest family in the United States of America. <laughs> These are my two little kids. This is the, this is how I enjoy my life in the United States. I don't have to depend upon the government all the time. I'm helping my community people who doesn't know English to teach them ESL classes and citizenship classes. And I should proudly say that I have got more than 20 people who doesn't speak English and they are now citizens of this country. I volunteer with the police security force because many of our people doesn't know the system and doesn't know the law of this country. So I have to, I along with my other community volunteers, educate our people about law and order of this country. We just don't ask the government to always help us. We have to help ourselves. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs>